Hey what's up guys? Today I'll show you a horror film, no one gets out alive. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins with a poor woman tired up on an altar. A pair of giant hands stick out from the tunnel behind her. Right then, a monster more than 10 meters high slowly crawls out. The upper body of the monster is human shaped. The face is covered by a film. Beneath the body are two giant hands. The monster's big mouth is on the belly. As we can see, the monster walks towards the woman, with its long flat tail dragging along the ground. The woman's name is Ambar, who lives a miserable life. Her mother is seriously ill. She has to give up her future to take care of her mother. Ambar has been under a lot of stress, and can't sleep well for a long time. Her mother is her only family in this world. She has been looking after her mother carefully. However, her mother's condition deteriorates, and dies not long after. Ambar is sad, but she also feels relieved, because she can finally live a normal life. Soon Ambar smuggles into America, and finds an accommodation. The landlord is a man with an angry mustache, according to whom, Ambar is his second tenant. The woman living downstairs doesn't speak English, and doesn't show up a lot. The decoration and the appliances are old, but the rent is cheap. That's why Ambar chose this weird place. That night before she goes out, she finds some green powder on the door handle. Later, she meets the woman living downstairs. She greets her politely. To her surprise, the woman can actually speak English, but she doesn't look very nice. The woman says all the landlord said is smelly as bullshit. However, Ambar doesn't take it seriously from such a shitty woman she sees. The next evening, she comes home after a party. She starts to wander around this house. She finds a locked basement, and there are some scratches on the door. While she is checking on the scratches, the landlord appears with his angry mustache. He angrily warns her not to enter the basement and the study, which are private spaces. Ambar asks him to return the deposit. The price for her certificate goes up by $2,000 all of a sudden. The landlord says he can't return it, because he has spent all the money on decorating the house. Ambar wants to borrow some money from the woman downstairs, but the shitty woman is not home. Ambar finds a handprint in green powder on the door. Ambar has a tough life, and work is not going well. One day, while she is working, suddenly a moth flies towards her. Later, she hears somebody calling her name. She turns around, but sees nobody. And the moth also disappears. Ambar thinks she sees things because she is too sensitive. Finally, Ambar saves up and gives the money to a co-worker, who can help her get a fake ID. During the night, when Ambar finishes work, she sees a moth in a streetlight. She wonders how the moth got into the light. However, she doesn't know that a woman appears out of nowhere behind her. Afterward, when she is home, she sees a man banging his head against the wall while mumbling something. Ambar is a bit scared, so she returns to her room. Suddenly, the light outside of her door is on. She hears somebody walking past by, and speaking in a low voice. Then the light turns off, when the voice stops. Later, Ambar meets two girls in the kitchen, who are very friendly. Before they start to chat, the landlord enters suddenly. The girls leave quickly, as soon as they see his angry mustache. Ambar asks him about the man banging his head. She is curious because in the past, the landlord told her that he only rented the rooms to females. The landlord tells her that man is his big brother, who is mentally disabled. Ambar doesn't think anything of it. Later, Ambar sneaks into the study again, while the landlord is not paying attention. There are lots of insect specimens in the room, and a record is playing. Out of curiosity, she puts on the headphones, and listens. The recording is about some ritual of consecration. Then she also finds many books about consecration on the desk. Suddenly, the recorder makes a harsh sound. Ambar jumps, and drops the picture frame in her hand. Luckily, she leaves the room before being discovered. The next day, Ambar expects her co-worker to be at the appointed place, but she never appears. Weirdly enough, her co-worker won't pick up her phone either. Somebody in the company tells her that her co-worker quit this morning, taking all the money Ambar gave her. So Ambar asks her boss for the co-worker's address. But her boss refuses to tell her, saying he has to protect his employee's privacy. Ambar keeps asking. Her boss is annoyed, so he fires her. Therefore, her life is a mess now. At night, Ambar takes a warm shower to relax. She hears a woman screaming coming from the drain. She turns off the tap, and this time, she hears clearly a woman screaming, and crying for help from the basement. Terrified, Ambar trembles in the bathroom. A woman is approaching her. 
but when she opens the shower curtain, the woman is gone. Ambar is scared to be alone in the room, so she gets dressed and leaves. The landlord happens to be at her door when she is out. He tells her that the woman downstairs has moved out, and a new tenant has moved in. So he will be able to return the deposit to her tomorrow. During midnight, a moth flies into Ambar's room. As she is staring at the moth, it suddenly changes into a woman. The next second, Ambar wakes up in her bed. It was just a dream, but her door is somehow open. She walks out and sees a dim figure standing in the corridor. From the footprint on the floor, she can tell an invisible person is running towards her and stops in front of the window. Later, an old lady appears out of thin air beside her. Before she realizes what is going on, these two people are fighting together. After that, Ambar hears someone crying. She follows the sound and finds a woman sobbing in the corridor on the ground floor. Before she can speak to her, the woman is dragged away by something. Ambar is so terrified, and she can't call the police because she is an illegal immigrant. After a lot of thought, she decides to call her uncle to pick her up. However, her uncle is too far away. He can't come over right away. She has to stay there until she finds somewhere else to live. The next day, while she is thinking about her problems on the subway, all the lights go out suddenly. When the lights are back on, all the passengers are gone. There is only a miserable woman sitting near her and a box on the floor. Two big hands reach out from the box. The next minute, Ambar wakes suddenly, startled a lot. Later, Ambar goes back to the landlord, because she has nowhere to go. She can't find her money anywhere in her room. The landlord explains that the building is odd. His father liked to collect all sorts of weird things, and he even murdered his mother. Ambar feels something is not right. She wants to leave, but the landlord stops her with his angry mustache. The reason is that his brother needs her. While they are talking, the landlord's brother comes in. He mutters something to the wall. Then he suddenly pours alcohol into Ambar's mouth. The landlord warns her not to think about escaping. That would only make things worse without his angry mustache's permission. After that, the landlord and his brother leave the room. Shortly afterward, the two girls living here run to her. They just experience the same thing as Ambar. Therefore, the three of them decide to work together to escape. Ambar thinks the landlord might have locked some women in the basement. Apparently, something unusual is going on in this building. The other two girls also dreamed about the box before. They think the box is hidden in the basement. While they are talking, Ambar sees a woman standing at the door, who is calling her name. The next minute, the girl's scream wakes her up. The landlord and his brother are trying to take a girl away. Ambar tries to stop them. However, she is not strong enough to fight his mustache. She can only watch them taking the girls away. Just then, the doorbell rings. The landlord's brother locks Ambar in the room, while the landlord goes to answer the door. It is Ambar's uncle. He is here for Ambar. The landlord claims he has never seen Ambar here. But Ambar's uncle peeps through the door, and sees Ambar's luggage. Ambar's uncle realizes she is in danger, so he breaks into the building, and finds the room where Ambar is quickly. Unfortunately, he can't get Ambar out, because the door is firmly locked. Ambar hears fighting outside. Later, she sees a pool of blood under the door. Ambar understands that she will never escape. Her hands and legs are chained. The landlord's brother carries a girl to the basement. The other girl is tied to the bed. The landlord tells Ambar his father found a big box and put it in the basement. At that time, his brother was sick. They had to move back to their hometown, because they couldn't afford the medical treatment. He witnessed his father using girls to conduct consecration in the basement. The more people his father used for consecration, the better the brother's health got. Eventually, his father lost his mind, and had even sacrificed his wife. Later, the landlord learned that there is a monster in the box. The monster can cure all diseases, as long as you offer humans to it. The landlord and his brother later killed their father, and they began to imitate their father's way of offering innocent people to the monster. If they offer Ambar and the two girls to the monster, the brother will recover soon. Then they will quit. Afterward, the landlord's brother carries Ambar to the basement, after wiping some blood on Ambar's forehead. Ambar sees lots of ghosts on the way to the basement. They are the women the landlord and his brother offered to the monster. By far, all the mysteries have been solved. The bad dreams Ambar had, were warnings from these victims. They wanted to draw Ambar's attention, and make her leave. The green powder handprint was also a warning from the ghosts. However, everything is too late. Soon Ambar is tied to an altar in the basement. The landlord's brother opens the box. 
Inside the box, there is a passage without an end. There are many dead moths on the floor, which come back to life, and gather at the entrance of the passage. Just then, Ambar's uncle stumbles to her, and unties the chains. Once Ambar is free, they run as fast as they can. They burst a door open, and fall into the darkness. When Ambar wakes up, she is beside her mother's bed. Her mother is alive and still so kindly. However, what she is seeing is just a vision the monster creates. In reality, Ambar has slipped into a coma. The monster climbs out from the passage, and squats above Ambar. The monster holds up Ambar's head, ready to eat it. However, unconscious Ambar is still talking to her mother in the vision. Her mother begs her to stay with her. Seeing Ambar hesitating, her mother suddenly wrings Ambar's neck with a menacing look, which as a result, brings Ambar to her senses. Right then, Ambar kills her mother in the vision, and wakes up in the real world at the same time. The monster has disappeared because of that. She opens the box, inside which there is a human skeleton. Ambar could have left, but she changes her mind. She can't let the landlord and his brother get away with this. They should be punished for killing so many innocent people. Later, Ambar finds them in the house, and knocks the landlord out with a large blunt weapon. The landlord's brother avoids Ambar's attack. He steps on her ankle, and crushes it. At this critical moment, a surviving girl pushes the brother away, and runs away. But she is captured by the brother, and is thrown off the balcony down the stairs. The girl falls to her death. Then, the landlord's brother drags Ambar out, and is going to kill her too. Ambar pulls a blade out from him, and cuts him. He loosens his grip on Ambar because of the pain. Ambar takes her chance and picks up a big knife from the floor, chopping him to death. After that, Ambar takes the landlord to the basement, and ties him up on the altar, watching him in his smelly mustache being eaten alive by the monster. When this is finished, Ambar limps out of the basement. She is surprised to find her broken ankle miraculously recovered. Her wounds are gradually disappearing. Suddenly, she realizes she's healed by the monster, and the monster wants to make a deal with her, to keep her stay in the weird house and feed it the new prey. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Peace out.